Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am the Economic Analyst and in this video I'm going to give you an update to a previous video I made a week ago about the yield curve because there have been some questions popping up in the news and I've even seen some comments on some of my uh, videos talking about the risk that uh, the yield curve may be inverting. So in the previous video, and I'll post that video in a link for you guys to view, I made a note that whenever the yield curve inverted, which means that the short-term treasuries, which is highlighted here in red, starts trading at a higher yield or interest rate than middle or long-term treasuries, which typically is the 10-year treasury bond, which is in blue, that the economy goes into a recession, okay? And that's what we call an inverted yield curve where short-term interest rates are trading at a higher interest rate than long-term. The thinking goes that long-term interest rates should permanently be higher than short-term interest rates because the risk premium on holding a security that pays you interest for a longer period of time is higher than pay being paid for a shorter period of time. There are risks that the uh, issuer of the debt security, if you're owning, a, say, a corporate bond, could default during a longer period of time. And then there's issues of inflation, prices picking up. And so the real returns on that debt security actually diminishes. But an interesting phenomena has developed inside the United States ever since we've come out of World War II. And that is that the yield curve tends to invert about a year to two years out before every single recession inside of the United States. And this chart pretty much paints it. And so to, to draw attention right quick, we see here that, you know, with the two-year treasury, which is in blue right quick, when it starts going above that 10-year treasury in red, in red, that's when uh, the yield curve has inverted and there is a recession. Now, earlier I may have mentioned that the two-year treasury was in red and the 10 years in blue. It's clearly marked up here, and I apologize for that error on my part, that the two-year uh, treasury is in blue and the 10-year and the is in red. So what's going on right now? Well, in the past few months, ever since October, really, of 2021, the yield on the two-year treasury has risen by about 1%, but the yield on the 10-year treasury has risen about half of that, or 0.5%. So the spread or difference between the two uh, yields or interest rates are very much tightening. They're getting closer and closer together. So we're approaching that risk of a yield curve inverting, or are we? Well, you know, that it's an interesting phenomena when we've observed that short-term interest rates trading above middle long-term interest rates is indicative of a recession. But I'm going to show you some charts here, and I thought I painted this in the last video, but if it's not, I'm going to hammer it home on why I think this phenomena bears itself out. And so it will give you a better tool to use as a barometer, so to say, of when we are going to have some instabilities in the economy that could lead to the next recession here. This chart right here is the is the same chart as the one before, except the, the two graph lines are merged together. This is the 10-year treasury minus the two-year uh, treasury at constant maturity. And you can see here how the yield, the spread between the two are is absolutely... Um, diminishing here and is approaching zero. And as you can see in past recessions, which are shaded in gray here, whenever that turns negative, we've often had a recession. And so now we're seeing the spread tighten and people are beginning to wonder and say, wait, is, there, is this going to be indicative of a recession? Are we going to have in the next, say, first half of the 2022, another inverted yield curve? But the problem comes as to what you define as your short-term treasuries, because I'm going to show you three graph lines here and overlay them against the 10-year treasury. So when we take a 10-year treasury and, and subtract it by the federal funds rate, which is in blue, we can compare that to the 10-year treasury and subtract by minus the two-year treasury maturity, and that's in red. And we can take it and subtract it by the three-month maturity, and you can see that the yield curve inverts on all three on all three graphs about the same time before the economy enters a recession, okay? So 
the question becomes, which yield curve do you use? Because even though the spread between the two-year and the 10-year is tightening, well, that's not tightening between the three-month and the 10-year, and it's not tightening between the Fed funds and the 10-year, and yet those inverted before we went into a recession. So what makes us believe that the two-year treasury is the magic barometer to use to say, okay, this is the threshold here to indicate whether we're going into a recession or not. And that's the point that I want to make in this video. It's a short video, but I wanted to drill home that point. I don't really think that it has to do with short-term interest rates being necessarily higher than long-terms. I think it has to do with how high the federal funds rate is because in this in this graph line and I'm going to you know as you can see here the blue which is the federal funds rate is controlling the short term interest rate such as the one year treasury which is in red the two year treasury which is in green and then these short term interest rates are being manipulated by the federal funds rate whenever the federal funds rate drops so do these short term interest rates and whenever the federal funds rate rises, so do these short-term interest rates. Why? Because the Federal Reserve, when it controls the Fed funds rate, actively purchases and sells and sells short-term treasuries predominantly, and therefore it has more of a control over those interest rates than middle to long term. So whenever we see an inverted yield curve on, say, the 10-year minus the two-year, it's really not just showing some kind of weird phenomena where the two-year treasury is market-oriented and there's all these buyers and sellers selling and buying two-year treasuries versus 10-year treasuries that's creating this inverted yield curve. It's the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. And whenever they raise those interest rates, which is really controlled by the federal funds rate, that raises on the on that short term end the one year and the two year treasury and that causes the inverted yield curve that's what creates the inverted yield curve so the inverted yield curve in my opinion is a symptom of the federal funds rate being raised too high it's raised above those middle to long term interest rates and it is indicative that the cost of borrowing is too high at least on the short term level and that's what crashes the market here and you can see that time and time again cycle in and cycle out so when we look over here and we say oh my goodness the two-year treasury rate is rising and it's approaching that 10-year treasury or when we say the one-year treasury is rising and it's approaching that 10-year treasury that's not what you should be concerned about what you should be concerned about is where the federal funds rate is because in my opinion that is the strictest measure for showing when the yield curve inverts because as you as we note here before every single recession inside of the United States it has been the federal funds rate that has been lifted above that 10-year treasury rate that then crashes the market why because the Federal Reserve is controlling those short-term interest rates now you may be wondering well what's so magical about the federal funds rate well there's a couple of things one is is that the federal funds rate dictates short-term borrowing between banks so banks when they have need access to cash really quickly and really cheaply they're going to enter in the federal funds market they'll actively charge each other charge each other banks will each other those interest rates around that federal funds rate to lend to each other so that they can maintain short operations but there's one other key point that this federal funds rate influences right quick and i'm going to put that in right now so that way you can see the correlation and this may be the revealing point of showing the man behind the curtain of why the federal funds rate is so important in our u.s markets today and that's because there is another interest rate that is directly pegged to the federal funds rate and it's called the bank prime loan rate now you may have heard me mention this bank prime loan rate before but I wanted you to see this on this chart here. The bank prime loan rate is in red, the federal funds rate in blue. And I want you to see just how tightly correlated these two are, okay? They're pegged very closely to each other. The bank prime loan rate is the base interest rate that banks use to calculate all loans that they make. 
especially on the short-term loans or for unsecured debt. So credit cards based off the bank prime loan rate, vehicle loans based off the bank prime loan rate, even mortgages can be based off the bank prime loan rate, although mortgages are typically deter uh, determined by the LIBOR rate, the London Interbank Offering Rate, or at least it was until recently. But the London Interbank Offering Rate, the LIBOR rate, if you were ever to look up what those rates were in history, they are nothing more than the federal funds rate itself, okay? So there's really nothing special here about the other short-term interest rates as far as treasury bills are concerned, but it's the federal funds rate that controls so much of the short-term borrowing in the banking system that it may explain that why the when the Fed raises rates and raises them to a point, it actually collapses the markets because it determines the short-term interest rates on so many other levels, especially this really influential bank prime loan rate. Now, I can't say that for certain. That's why this happens in this phenomena, nor does it explain why we see situations of why it is that the federal funds rate trades above the 10-year treasury rate that we all of a sudden have a market crash of one to two years. The only thing that I can say is that it serves as a pretty reliable indicator that when this phenomenon occurs, when the yield curve inverts, and let me be clear here, when I define the yield curve inverting, I define it as the federal funds rate itself. The federal funds rate is trading above the 10-year treasury rate or the 30-year treasury rate. That's when we incur an economic recession, okay? I don't really take a pay attention to the one-year treasury or the two-year treasury because more than likely they're manipulated by the federal funds rate. I mean, there is some market interaction into there, but it's not really important because to me, it's all about the Fed. The Fed has basically socialized our entire banking system because they've allowed the banking system to accumulate for the last 20 years where we capitalize the profits, socialize the losses. That, in my opinion, is what is determining the business cycle in, in, in general, not, not completely specific. There's always caveats to this, but in general, I think that's what's really causing the business cycle here is the Fed manipulation of interest rates through the excessive controls and uses of monetary policy, which is what's causing the distortions and malinvestments in our economy that lets us crash from time to time. That's my take on this, guys, but I wanted to clear that up in case if you guys have any questions about that. I really do think that the thing that you need to be paying attention is the federal funds rate. So right now, the federal funds rate is at is just sitting at 0.808%, okay? It's, not, it's, real, it's being tightly controlled by this Fed. So when we take a look at the 10-year Treasury rate, and I'll add that to this graph and then, and then wrap up. When we take a look at the 10-year uh, Treasury rate, uh, constant maturity rate. Let me pull that up right quick. Uh, there it is. When we take a look at that, we're still a degree off on the spread between the 10-year treasury yield rate and the federal funds rate, okay? And until we see, until we see that federal funds rate climb back up above that 10-year treasury, just like we saw in 2019, just like we saw in the mid-2000s, just like we saw at the end of the 1990s, and just like we saw at the end of the 1980s, and so on and so forth for each business cycle that we have gone through ever since World War II, I really don't think that we're going to be particularly at risk of an economic recession. Now, let me let me be clear here. Does that mean that the that for the magic formula to work to cause crashes that the federal funds rate must be raised above that 10-year treasury? Well, no. It just serves as an indicator, a, a pretty sure barometer that whenever the federal funds rate is trading above that 10-year treasury, that is a surefire indicator that the federal funds rate is too high for the economy to continue functioning normally. We're going to have a breakdown we're going to have losses accumulate. Unemployment is going to go up. Bankruptcies will incur. People will lose their jobs. Incomes will drop. And the economy will go into a recession and correct. That's my take on that. It does not, I don't really ascribe to the inverted yield curve as like the magic formula, as like saying that this is the exact rule that it must happen. But I do think it serves as a reliable indicator. 
So, you know, if you've been watching my videos, I've created my own tool, my own debt default model to predict how high interest rates must go for the federal funds rate to compensate and, and determine that it's too much for the economy to handle leading to a crash. And right now, from what my debt default model is showing, and I'll post the link to the video for that, it's showing that the we can sustain the federal funds interest rate up to one and a quarter percent. But once we go below above and beyond that one and a quarter percent to one and a half, that's going to be too much for the economy to handle, and we will go into a recession um, sometime after that. It'll take a couple of years to manifest with rising default rates, delinquencies on loans, and a slowdown in the economy. So, guys. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments about what I've said or whether you agree or disagree, drop a comment down. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know what you're thinking here. I'm not always going to be right about this, but it definitely seems to be something that I've noticed and I've been paying attention for the past four or five years. And I do think I'm on to something. I think that it really is the federal funds rate that determines this. If you like the content, if you like the things that I provide you, make sure you just show me some support. Click that like button on the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that notification bell so you're automatically notified whenever I do post a new video so that you can be the first to watch it. And as always, stay tuned and I'll be providing you updates. I'll talk to you next time.